Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I created a similar video on Angular and there I talked about the future of Angular. This video here is about the future of React. I'll dive into the weaknesses I see and the strengths and then I'll give you an outlook of what's going to happen in 2019 and then also thereafter. Hope you like the video. If you do, of course, as always, please share, subscribe, comment, you know the game. So let's dive in. Now in this video, I'll not dive into what React is. I have a complete course on that in case you're interested. Instead, in this video, let's dive right in and have a look at what React actually does well and what React does not so well or where it's weaknesses and strengths are. Without a question, React is a very popular JavaScript library. Not a framework, as is super important to a lot of people, but a library. And that already leads me to one of maybe its biggest weaknesses or strengths, depending on how you see it. So a weakness of React, especially compared to Angular or Vue, could be that it's a library focused on building components, building and rendering components, and it doesn't give you not much besides that. There is no built-in router, there is some built-in state management, obviously within a component and with React context also across components, though that is not really a perfect state management uh, solution for fast changes or for high frequency changes. Um, you can also check out this article and video which I created on that. So there is no built-in state management system for, uh, for global state management uh, with uh, a lot of changes. That is all missing. There also is no built-in form validation solution or anything like that. It really is a library that focuses on allowing you to build components that are then rendered efficiently to the DOM. And that of course could also be seen as a strength of React because of that focus. You of course have an easier time learning it. There is less overhead which you'll have to learn. And React therefore is really fast. All the development that happens on React can focus on making that rendering and that component build process more efficient and better. And um, yeah, you have a clearly defined task. And if you only need that task, you have less overhead. And if you need more than just the component building and rendering part, then of course you can bring in third-party packages like the React router. The disadvantage with uh, such third-party packages just of course is that you're now relying on yet another party that maintains these packages. If the team behind a library or behind a framework, like the Angular team for Angular, if that team is responsible for maintaining the, the router, let's say, like the Angular router for Angular, then you can rely on that package being up to date and working with the latest version of Angular or React or whichever library you're using. You can rely on that a bit more. If the community is maintaining that. Obviously, there are large packages like React Router, which are well maintained, but you have that extra dependency. It might simply take a bit longer until that library works with the latest version, or at least until it leverages all the advantages of the latest version. And um, in the worst case, of course, you might be using a package that uh, suddenly is not maintained anymore, and then you either have to maintain it yourself or you have to switch to a different package. So that could be a disadvantage of React too, uh, but you can go either way. Besides that, I really think that React at the moment is on a pretty, pretty good road. It's uh, really popular, it's very popular. It does its job rendering components really well. It's relatively easy to learn, not that easy to master, but what is. It's relatively easy to learn though, and with the recent addition of React Hooks, which is a major, a major change to React, not a breaking one, thankfully, but which is really a big thing for React. With that change, I think we also have a very bright future ahead for React. Now, why are Hooks so important and what else will the future bring? Well, hooks are important because they allow you to write function components only. Hence, you no longer have that switch between class-based components and function components. 
And that of course is not just great on its own because you now have less friction there, but it's also great because with hooks, you can also build your own hooks and that allows you to share stateful logic between components. With class-based components, that was not really possible. Now you can write certain logic, let's say for making an HTTP request and updating a state that you are now loading and then once the data is there that you're not loading anymore. You can share such logic between components now in a very, very easy way and in a way that is decoupled from the component itself. That is a huge thing because it makes writing complex logic and sharing that much easier, which is really great. So that's a huge thing with hooks. In addition, hooks can be tricky to learn or to uh, not, not so much to learning, but to use them correctly. That can be tricky, but it also means that certain bugs that will occur are bugs that you had in your application before as well, but you didn't see them there because maybe they were very subtle. They didn't surface as quickly, but maybe you had some behavior in your app that under some circumstances could cause an error like send a redundant HTTP request or anything like that. With hooks, such bugs tend to surface much earlier, which can be frustrating at first, but which in the long term leads to cleaner code. So these are React hooks, a huge addition to React, and we're just getting started with these. There are a lot of patterns to evolve, a lot of best practices to emerge, and therefore it will definitely be interesting to see what else will happen there in 2019 and thereafter. That on its own is already an amazing development, which, will, uh, which is very likely to advance uh, React a lot. It is, however, also worth noting that you can still use class-based components and that for the near future at least, class-based components are not going to go anywhere. I do think that the future of React embraces hooks and will uh, basically mean that we only use function components and hooks. But since we all have these um, existing React projects where we use class-based uh, components or because you might join a team that uses an older version of React that uses class-based components or that simply is more, more confident working on an app with class-based components, because of that class-based components will stay around and will still be an important part of React. But uh, the further we progress, the more we are in the future, the more important uh, React hooks will become. So that is React and React hooks. Now, of course, the future is not just React hooks. There is an official roadmap on reactjs.org, which you can check out. And there we see that for 2019, three major releases or features are planned. Now, one of them was React hooks, which we already have. The other two are about concurrent mode and suspense. Now, concurrent mode is a different mode in which we can run our React app, where React behind the scenes will work a bit differently, where it can uh, basically step into a long running rendering process and for example, pause that to make a high frequency or a very, uh, excuse me, a high priority DOM update first. That is something you will not control on your own so much, but that React will do behind the scenes to improve performance. And as we all know, performance improvements are always great. Another important release will be React Suspense. That is a feature that actually is already included since React 16.6. There you can use it to lazy load routes, to um, code split on routes, and um, it will basically allow you to define a fallback DOM uh, element or a fallback a component that you render whilst you're waiting on some async operation to, to finish and some data to arrive. So at the moment we can use that uh, with the React router for example. We can use that to download code for the next chunk of our application behind the scenes and in the meantime if that takes longer Suspense could show uh, a loading spinner. Now that is what's already implemented in 2019. Um, as you can see here in the roadmap later in the year, um, it will ship as a feature which we can use for regular data fetching as well. So where we make an HTTP request to load, let's say a list of posts and with React Suspense, we can actually do this a bit more elegantly than we're doing it right now. We don't manually have to check whether we're still loading and set some loading spinner. Instead, we'll be able to use React Suspense to uh, basically show a fallback as long as we don't have our posts yet, let's say a loading spinner. And as soon as these posts are there, then React Suspense will get out of the way and will render that content. 
So that's also a pretty interesting addition. It will help us uh, deal uh, better or in a more efficient way with async operations and asynchronous data. This is all 2019 and I'm pretty excited for these features because I think they will help us write um, React applications with a better performance and with React Suspense also with a better user experience. This is 2019. In 2020 it's hard to tell what we will see. Now there are obviously always performance tweaks and so on uh, going on behind the scenes. Um, probably also some uh, steps that are taken to reduce the bundle size. Um, I also think it's possible that we will see the removal of some deprecated features or the deprecation of some features. Maybe uh, class-based components will be deprecated at some point. Um, probably not in 2020 though, but later, but we don't know. Um, and maybe also some exciting new APIs that kind of uh, follow the same direction as suspense and concurrent mode. So helping us with asynchronous operations and optimizing the rendering process of React even more. Because we never should forget that React in its core is about rendering components to the DOM. So the React team will most likely continue working on that. What I don't think we'll see is an official React router or something like that. Maybe the context API will evolve a bit more and suddenly at some point will also be um, an option for high frequency state changes, which it at the moment is not. Again, I have a separate article and video on that. But of course, hard to tell, but these are things I could imagine that we see. So to sum it up in general, React is pretty good already, pretty popular obviously, and in high demand, just like Angular the future of React is definitely great because with React Hooks one important change already landed and we'll probably see the benefits of that over this and the next year. And of course also thereafter, but we'll see the biggest changes in this and the next year. And with concurrent mode, suspense and maybe similar changes and adjustments, we'll continue that road and I think React definitely um, is, um, has a very bright future for all these reasons. Now it's hard to tell what the next major version of React, React 17, what that will bring, um, if some features will be removed or deprecated there, like as I said, uh, the class-based components, but that is hard to tell. In general, I'm very optimistic that React um, is obviously there to stay and will become more and more important.